Hi, my name is Willow. Welcome to the sort of transmission for this week. I am talking to Sandtrap, an indie rock band from Auckland, New Zealand. How are you? Good, yeah, thanks. great. Thank you. Startling, is it when the when the camera rolls? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. First of all, there's our introductions. So, could you introduce uh, who you are, what you do in the band, and I believe someone's missing, right? I can start. Yeah. I'm yeah, yeah. Jimmy. I play drums in the band. I'm Luca. I play bass. I'm Kainoa. I play guitar and I sing. And Luke is in here, who's the other guitarist. I was going to make an old man joke about, uh, do you live on the second floor, Luca? But no, but nobody would get that joke, right? My name is Luca. <laughs> uh, I've, I've um, gotten that a couple of times from uh, some people. Well, Luke is quite well versed in dad jokes, actually. True, yeah. He's, a, he's sort of a dad of the band. A bit of a dad. Say. Who can tell me how the band started and its journey until this point us three uh have been playing together since we were in intermediate school so i think it was 2015 we were first in a band together and we spent that year basically playing arctic monkeys covers yep we were an arctic monkeys cover band pretty much it kind of kept going throughout high school but lost the arctic monkeys cover band to an extent <laughs> Uh, and then um, uh, Luke Luke joined the band when we were like, I think year eleven, yeah, 11. like sixteen, yep. 15, yeah, sixteen. And then we played to the rest of high school, did rock quests throughout, and um, and yeah, a couple of years out of high school now was still going and still love doing it. So I watched your smoke free uh, rock quest footage, and I was impressed uh, at the concise performance. Didn't spot any glaring bum notes, flat vocals, or drop sticks, which can often happen in front of a camera. Well done. You must have been pretty happy with the outcome. Uh, where did you end up placing? And how old were you at the time, actually, come to think of it? We would have been 17? 18. 18. 17, 18. Yeah. And we placed third, which is pretty cool. Yeah, we were super stoked about that. Everything was pretty smooth. Even the tempo and stuff, because you, you don't play to a click or anything, do you? No. No. <laughs> Speaking of other things you've done, uh, releases, you've released three things on Bandcamp to date. You had The Six Feet Down in 2020, you had Juiced Up Monkey, which was a two-track in 2021, and two singles in 2022, namely Back, uh, Backseat Divulgence and Dividing for the Hungry. Um, so yeah, it's 2023. So what's in the pipeline for us? Hooking up an EP. Yeah, that should be. We don't have a set date, but we're going through like the pre, the post-production of that sorting out the promo and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, and it's been it's been a, a while in the making. Like even while those singles were coming out, we were trying to work on it. So it's really it's, it's taken taken a long time to come to fruition. Really, could you tell me, like for example, how many tracks are on it? There's five tracks on the EP overall. Um, two of them are the singles that we released last year with uh, three new songs. Have you got like a rough idea when it might come out? I guess probably a bit later on this year, I guess. Maybe late July, but we're still like working all that out. Yeah. Because of like how early it is and our like writing process with the EP, it kind of has like a song for anyone. Because like yeah. it kind of covers like our journey of like songwriting. Yeah. Like Dividing for the Hungry, which is out, is quite like not pop rock, but it's pretty mainstream. And then there's stuff like new tracks, like Hourglass and Epiphenia, which are a bit bit heavier and a bit more, I don't know, like tasteful or something like that. You know, weirder. Yeah. A bit weirder, maybe, yeah. Yeah. All right, cool. Well, I'm not really an indie rock guy, although one does get exposed to indie rock, you know, from TV and the radio and the internet and stuff over, over the course of your life. Uh, what influences do you draw from when you write music? And uh, do you have a larger catalogue of songs that you haven't yet recorded? What would the list be? It would be like yeah. Arctic Monkeys, Strokes, Muse. Radiohead for me. I Writing lyrics especially, try to channel that Arctic Monkeys, Radiohead sort of vibe. I don't know, very influenced by their um, lyricism and, <clears throat> and also just songs in general because it's like what, what I grew up kind of listening to music and getting into was that kind of stuff and it um influenced how i how i write now even to be honest i can't even remember when bands like radiohead came out it was so long ago 
Um, so that must have been before you were born when Radiohead were quite big, right? Yeah. The like 90s? Yeah, 90s they started, you know. And when were you born? Uh, 2002 was the year that we were born. Yeah. So. Has there been no sort of music, apart from Arctic Monkeys, obviously, has there been no music sort of closer to this point in history that really influences you as well? I personally really like uh, Black Midi and like Black Country New Road and those sort of bands in the scene at the moment kind of taking the charge of like a new sort of wave is uh th- those bands are really exciting to me i think like most of the stuff that i listen to kind of on my own outside of that indie rock generally started coming out in like the 2000s um so that's kind of more like a alternative metal new metal scene um like bands like Trivium or Gojira or Slipknot. What about you, drummer man? I'm really bad at finding new <laughs> stuff. I just cycle through the same old. So I'm just still in the Arctic Monkeys phase. I never left it. <laughs> <laughs> true and true. Okay, fair enough. Back, back to the question. So um, do you have a, a larger catalog of songs? Because I've been in bands that have a, like a few songs that have been recorded, but most of the stuff's live. And I've been in bands where pretty much everything that has been conceived has been recorded, but we only play a small percentage of it live. So which are you? I wouldn't say we have like a large catalogue, but maybe like yeah. we're working on about four songs at the moment, I'd say. Yeah, we've sort of got a foot in each each like realm. Let's break it down to figures. Like you've released how many? Uh, one, two, three, four. Uh, including this, maybe so. M- maybe you've done about nine or ten songs, I guess. Once the EP's finished, you've, you've you've completed about nine recorded tracks. How many tracks do you have in total outside that? Probably twenty. Would it be twenty? Probably around right, man. Including if, like if, if you uh, if you count the ones that we've written, but we don't, don't play, don't play at all, then maybe. Um, yeah, it's maybe? it's probably around but, twenty. It's like. Another Nearly thing. half and half, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, I mean, that's a that is a decent chunk of um of music, so that's it's a good thing. Okay. So so as you say, you're you're like half and half, right? You're sort of one foot in, one foot out. So yeah, somewhere in the middle, which is probably a good a, a good place to be. You've probably recorded the best tracks of the batch, which is a good thing. We definitely did all like what we considered to be the best ones that we had at the time. Yeah. Um, but we are still wanting to like get more done yeah, and yeah. put out there. And because of the EP, we're in this phase of like wanting to get past the songs that are on the EP while we try to get that out. We're really trying to move forward and get new songs done. So that's like where we're at right now. Do you gig regularly? And if so, um, do you have any gigs coming up? We try gig as much as possible, definitely. And the next one is July 22nd at the Underground. Okay, you want to tell me a little, little bit about that show? Like, who's playing? We're playing with Fox, actually, who you um, interviewed recently. And they've been popping off a lot at the <clears> moment. <throat> Those guys are really cool. Mm-hmm. And, Paradox. and Slow Rage, who we've gigged with before, who are also really cool. Yeah, quite a while back. All right, so the last thing, is there anything else you'd like to add to the interview? Yeah, with our EP coming out, Really soon, we're really excited to get that out there um, to people that have been waiting, and um, it uh, should be coming out next couple of months. Isn't it? <laughs> uh, you'll be able to find it wherever you listen to your music. Cool. Also, I want to say thank you to like all the people that have supported us and been like coming to our shows and listening to our music. Um, really appreciate everyone who's helped us out. Yeah. And I'll just yeah say thank you to you. It's really cool to be a part of interviews like this. And I think we want to get into the industry a bit more and get our faces out there. So it's really cool to be a part of stuff like this. So thanks, man. How many interviews have you actually done to this to this uh, date? This is my first one. <laughs> We've done like uh, maybe a couple for RockQuest and we did one yeah. on Haraki a few years back. So on a scale of one to ten for awkwardness, how was this one? I say five. The li- five. one of the least awkward I felt in an interview, and that's saying a lot. <laughs> okay, <laughs> cool. Well, thanks very much for for uh, chatting with me tonight. Thanks, bro. Cool. All right. Say good night. Goodbye. <laughs> cool. And thanks for watching. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you. <laughs>